wasn't planning on talking about Father's Day at all today. I just don't typically do a Christmas message or a resurrection message. I don't know why. I just, and so I was just going to say Happy Father's Day and move on. And uh, sort of like what I did with Mother's Day. But doing worship, man, the Lord just showed me his heart for fathers. And so I used to only get words and pictures walking with God. But lately I'm getting I'm I'm getting more and more his feelings. It doesn't even say anything. It just shows me his feelings for people or things. Now how many of you have ever experienced that? Is it just me? Oh, two or three, a bunch of people actually. It's cool because it's another dimension. He's allowing me to see more of Him. But if you haven't guessed, I'm not a feelings person. So some of it's probably healthy and whole for me. But at the same time, I'm like, what do I do with these feelings? <laughs> but it's cool. But He just gave me an overwhelming just feelings for fathers. And so I'm just going to talk a few minutes about it, about being a father and I don't know how much of this he was, was actually on his mind, but it was coming to my mind when I was feeling it, so I just have to trust the Lord in it. We live in a society that is just so far from normal. It is just... Sometimes I wonder if we're ever even going to get back. And one of those is, is we have bought in in a society for the last 40 to 50 years in this lie of there's no, you know, we can be whatever gender we want, move around, do whatever we want. Uh, Fathers are not necessary. Families are not necessary. Mothers are not necessary. It's all fluid. And we're, we're seeing now that the fruits of that craziness. History will show you There's many things that make a stable society. But if you do not have a stable family, one man, one woman, that kids grow up in a protected society, in a protected family, it it does not last. There's not been in history any societies that have lasted any length of time of communal raising, of you don't know who your father and mother is, you just get thrown in a pool and raised together. Not a physical pool, but a group of people. It's just never happened. Why? Because it is a spiritual law that was put into the natural when Adam and Eve, one man, one woman, was created, who was to have kids. You know, they messed up some of that. But that was the original spiritual law that was put into the natural that whenever you violate it, no matter how much you want to break it, it cannot be broken because the world spins that way. There are a lot of physical laws. Gravity is one of them. You know, you can say all day long, gravity doesn't work. And I refuse to honor that physical law. I'm an individual and I rise above it. Well, go to the top of even the five-story building here, which is the highest building, the old landmark hotel in Dalton, and go to the top of it and jump off and see how good you are. They're going against natural laws. And there are a lot of natural laws that came from spiritual principles. And one of those is the family. And so we bought into the lie that the family does not need a father. And we've reaped this thing during during the worship. And I was getting this. I went and looked up some statistics that I had written down on my thing. And we are reaping a fatherless generation. Many of you in here, most of you in here, I looked around before, have had good fathers. Some of you I know didn't, but most of you did. And so fathers, I want to honor you today for being a father. I looked around at all of you, some of you are grandfathers now, but how many of you know that are grandfathers, there's unique challenges to raising adult kids, and they still need a father even now. I just want to honor you as fathers in this room because I just felt the heart of the Father for you today. 
Because you have said, I am going to be committed to this family, to this wife, to these kids, to my own hurt. When the world says, why are you doing this? You know, you get 50, go find some 25-year-old young-looking girl that has father issues, that's willing to sleep with you, it feels good. Abandon your kids. It happens all the time, but y'all haven't done it in here. You stayed. When you get your $4,000 a month salary, I just said that because that's about the average in America. Get your $4,000 a month salary, and you went out and bought a $100 pair of sneakers, and you splurged. And people go, wow, man. Because you hadn't had a new pair of shoes in three years. Because you spent the $3,900 on your family. Even though you made most of that money. You get what I'm saying? Well, actually about half of it went to the government. But that's another talk. <laughs> when your kids, I've had my kids, they're all older now, they don't do that, but... One in particular was like, man, you sure don't have very nice clothes. And you just smile and you look at them and they have nice clothes. Why? Because you spent your money on them. Your car is getting older. It's over 100,000 miles. It's not that great looking anymore. Instead of spending $700 a month on some nice car, you're making braces payments. That's the heart of the Father. And that's what keeps a society together. And that's what provides a safe place. And I just want to tell you, because I'm a father, you know, man, that's why I hate these downloads from the Father. I like Father's Day. But you know, what makes a father is the other 364 where you get up every morning and you go to work and you don't feel like it. Nobody's, they're all asleep, maybe. But you get up and you go. And you come back home. So that $4,000 can be spent on your family. And if you're lucky, you get 100 bucks. Isn't that the truth? And then the, Lord, the world says, you don't need that. I'm telling you, the Father is such a key point that keeps this world stable. That when they're not there and they say you're not important, you come up with statistics like this. Listen to this. Ninety percent of American inmates are men. Ninety percent of those inmates, statistically, these are not my figures, I did not have a father. Just by getting up and going to work and doing what we're supposed to do, maybe we get some, but we we have a vision for a generation beyond ours. See, as fathers and mothers, you can throw yourself into this too, but as fathers, you get up, you're living not for yourself, but you're living for that next generation to give them at least as good a start, hopefully a better start than you. And there's never any thanks until they have their own kids. Then they realize, well, this is a little bit harder job than I thought they was. But they keep getting up and going, how many of these 90% of men who fathers had just stayed there? I hear so much time with, well, you know, I don't love my wife anymore. I'm leaving. Well, you know, I feel that way a lot of times. Love's not about a feeling. A good portion of my life and every one of us here, we don't feel it, but we are committed to it knowing the feelings will come back later. It's called the fruit of self-control. It's called the fruit of patience. And you as a father, when we do that and are committed, we're modeling the father's heart. That he has towards us. How many times does the Holy Spirit and the Father go, I just don't feel really lovey-dovey towards Craig right now. But he didn't leave. How many times have I forgotten him weeks on end? 
but he still was there when I called the first time. See, that's the heart of the Father. And these men in prison, just crying, could have, so many of them, some of them were still gone, but how many would have been stayed if we just stayed and showed commitment? See, when you do that, and we get up and do it and spend our money and spend our time on other th- on, that could have been spent on us, other things, we're modeling the Father's heart and we're providing a place that gives stability to society. 65% of suicides they have found uh, are from homes that did not have a father. When you look at runaway kids, 9 out of 10 of them came without a father at home. You know, none of my kids have run away. But if one of them would do, they'd go, I want to run away, it's bad. Well, you know what I'd probably say? Listen, I felt that a hundred million times. I wanted to run away a bunch of times. Keep all my money, do my stuff, not have to do this, not have to do that. Man up and do it. You'll get through it. I'm not talking about abuse, okay? Yeah, but you know, you're going to have to do this a hundred more times, son or daughter. It's called perseverance. It's called grit, as, as Chad talked about. And I'm modeling it for you. If I can do it, you can do it. Well, that's often just what we need is a role model. We don't have to be perfect. None of us are perfect as fathers in here. But we're still doing what we're supposed to do. You all get anything out of this? So I applaud you, all the men in here. I looked around and just men and fathers in here. By, by us doing what we're doing, we're lowering the prison population. We're lowering the suicide rate. We're lowering the runaway rate. And we're giving a place that people can give hope. 80% of rapists are from fatherless homes. 7 out of 10 dropouts are from fatherless homes. Now, I have had some experience that with my kids because um, not tell on them, none of, none of them here, kids from another life. They get up, I don't want to go to school today. What's what's the use of getting a piece of paper? And I, <laughs> Abigail and Grace, I've told this to them, but I know she's got her college degree. Praise God. Hallelujah. Give her a clap off. And, and she used to ask me this in middle school. What's the use of the piece of paper? I would tell her like a high school. You know, not a whole lot, but you need the piece of paper. Just go and get the piece of paper. Well, I don't like any of this stuff. I didn't like it either. But you're going to get the piece of paper because you got to have it for what's next. Didn't I say stuff like that? And, uh, you know, and I got the piece of paper. You're going to get that. Well, it's just a piece. Of, no, it represents a lot more. It represents a future. It represents you can stick to something, you know. And uh, and so I applaud all the fathers in here who's kept kept their kids going. You're going to get the blooming piece of paper. Yeah, I know you hate it, but you need the piece of paper because some jobs you don't get without a piece of paper. Plus, you need it for your own self-esteem. Well, we could go on and on. Juvenile delinquent, 85% of them came from a fatherless home. And then we have the audacity, not we, not us in this room, people with a different agenda, let's put it that way. Say fathers aren't important. It's a lie. It's a different agenda. It's an agenda to destroy this great country. There are many tactics. That's a primary one. And it's working, but not here. Amen? And so I looked around. I applaud all you guys' fathers. So give the fathers a hand in here. Amen.